In this instruction video, we will go through the steps of designing a case study. A case study design starts with developing research questions and theoretical propositions. These questions and propositions will serve as a guidance for defining your units of analysis, distinguishing between single and multiple case studies, and continually judging the quality of your case study design. Let's start with the first step, defining your units of analysis. A unit of analysis is a basic definition of the case you want to study. In the classic case study, an individual person is the unit of analysis. But units of analysis can also be groups of persons, organizations, decisions, public programs, and so on. Defining your units of analysis is important for knowing the boundaries of your case study. However, an advantage of a case study is that it allows to deal with contextual conditions. Let's take a simple example. If your case study is about a cheerleading squad, it is likely that group membership changes over time. Some will quit and some will enter the squad later on. The case study could still be carried out, even though the identification of the group is unstable. So, the advantage of a case study is its flexibility. A distinction can be made between a holistic case study and an embedded case study. In a holistic case study, there is only a main unit of analysis, whereas an embedded case study considers a main unit, but also subunits of analysis. For instance, a case study may be about an elementary school, but may also have important questions about the students within this school. In this example, elementary school is the main unit of analysis, and the students are the subunits of analysis. A second step can be choosing between a single case study or a multiple case study. In a single case study, one investigates a single case, so only one person or one group. In a multiple case study, one investigates multiple cases. The multiple cases may be designed to replicate each other, but can also be designed to cover different theoretical conditions. A further question you can encounter when doing a multiple case study has to do with the number of cases. This selection should depend upon the certainty you want to have. If your target theoretical proposition and rival proposition differ to a great extent, you may only need three or four cases to reach a high degree of certainty. But, if differences between your target proposition and rival proposition are subtle, you may need more cases to reach a high degree of certainty. Both single case studies and multiple case studies can be either holistic or embedded. So, there are four possible types of basic case study designs. Carrying out a case study design is an ongoing process. Throughout the case study, the quality of the study should continually be judged. One can, for example, evaluate the construct validity, internal validity, external validity, and reliability. There are some general tactics for case studies. For instance, to increase the construct validity, it is advised to use multiple sources of evidence. Or, to increase the internal validity, one could do time series analysis. Or, rival theories within single cases can be used to increase the external validity. And to increase reliability, one can use a case study protocol. To summarize, in this video we went through the steps of designing a case study. A case study design starts with developing research questions and theoretical propositions. These questions and propositions will serve as a guidance for defining your units of analysis, distinguishing between single and multiple case studies, and continually judging the quality of your case study design.